Hello, welcome back to From Soft Serve. Uh, so we had a pretty massive update to the uh, Chad PS4 or Chad PS4 emulator yesterday that basically enabled uh, screen space ambient occlusion working. Uh, then we also had the uh, depth of field, fog effects, uh, particle effects uh became a lot better uh and so point light started rendering the character lantern started rendering so many things but the most important to me personally as the sicko that i am is it started rendering dynamic shadows which in bloodborne let's set the scene here first in bloodborne just like a lot of the FromSoft games or all of them really the dynamic shadows are reserved for the player, for enemies, uh, barrels, crates, uh, levers, anything that is dynamic. Essentially, that's when it gets a dynamic shadow because, of course, it's going to move so or be destroyed. So it needs to have a shadow that will update. Basically, everything else gets a baked shadow that's that's baked into the light map right so it's just painted onto the surface and it's it doesn't update that's the smart way to do it because stationary objects don't need their textures or their shadows to move right unless you have levolution from like battlefield 3 or whatever um but here's where i come in so because they enable dynamic shadowing uh, to at least function. Oh crap, I got hit by fire. Oh, dang. Okay. Alright, hold on. Let me run that back. I'm not going to cut this out, because that's actually funny. I got rid of my, uh, the SFX, uh, files, so that's why the fire wasn't rendering, but technically it, 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 you get the illumination from it, but it doesn't really render the fire. But we're back quick. We're back quick. Um, so where I was, Dynamic Shadows, which you've, if you've seen the title, you'll, you know where I'm going with this. So I've prepared for this my entire life. <laughs> uh, immediately when I saw that the Dynamic Shadows were... Oh, man. Okay. Well. Okay, it doesn't like me anymore. That's fine. Because uh, we're going to actually go elsewhere. We're going to go to uh, Central Yarn. So let's go to save data. Let's dump our fresh new hunter save. Refresh-ish hunter. Let's see if it likes this more. It's still temperamental. Also, you saw some surface issues there with like normal maps and whatnot. The most recent build kind of was a reversion on some of that where it starts having some material issues. Uh, but it adds so many things that like, hey, that's fine. Uh, also, water rendering is so much better now. Uh, it was just a massive step forward. But here's where I come in. Because I've done this to like every other FromSoft game. Uh, because dynamic shadowing is now a thing, as you can see, the player here has a dynamic shadow. Also, the blood is actually rendering, I don't think 100% correctly, but it is rendering. Uh, because look at the game right now. This is essentially, like, we are so close to accurate visuals. Um, but here's where we get to go a little bit better than PS4. So I went into Smithbox slash DS Map Studio. It's a fork of DS Map Studio. And I enabled dynamic shadowing on everything. Uh, I didn't do the distant LOD models, obviously, because uh, you shouldn't do it on those. And so I knew which ones to not pick. But I enabled it on everything else. So you'll get these dynamic shadows uh, from the little railing right here. And I didn't remove the baked shadows because I think that's, that's not going to be good. And those are also really good for distant shadowing because they're just applied by a texture. And so you don't need to worry about the shadow fade of the dynamic shadows. Which you can see on these pillars that Bloodborne coals the, shadow, the dynamic shadows very quickly for performance and that's understandable um, I'm looking into fixing that I should be able to fix that in the G params I have not I haven't fixed that yet but looking into that also underneath here you'll see the new dynamic shadow of the wheels 
uh, which is sick. And then of course the coffins have started to cast shadows. This entire map piece has casting shadows, which it had a baked shadow. But now the dynamic one is more accurate and higher resolution and just looks better and covers the baked one. So that's why the, keeping the baked shadows actually isn't a really terrible idea. And then of course you have the shadows from the actual foliage itself, which a lot of what's being done here, I think the screen space ambient occlusion is actually covering up the dynamic shadows, but in another area uh, you can see it better. But yeah, you can see the dynamic shadow uh, of that right there where my head is, is now reaching over here. Uh, so there were cases where certain things like foliage and like, yeah, trees and whatnot, they didn't get shadows at all, not even baked ones commonly. Um, so those are like completely new shadows now. Uh, let's go down here. Like, as you can see, this is incredibly accurate rendering to Bloodborne. And I'm getting a steady 30 FPS. I could be running higher, but for stability, also the input latency, uh, when you use the 60 FPS patch or the 30 FPS frame pacing patch, uh, input latency goes up a lot. So I actually get the best input latency at the default uh, 30 FPS. I might try to disable VSync and then using the uh, 60 FPS patch. Uh, now, something you'll notice is there's no enemies. Now, why is that? Yeah, I deleted them. <laughs> I just deleted them. I went into the MSB because right now this build has an issue for me. Some people have gotten a different EXE that they're using. I tried that one. And anytime you get hit by an enemy or hit an enemy, it crashes. Uh, I think it has something to do with the blood splatter. So I just deleted all the enemies. Um, which for these videos is better so I can just focus on the visuals, right? Um, now you'll notice I'm not using my FPS boost mod because that affects the same files that... Uh, that Man, it's a shadow casting, right? So I could make a version of my FPS boost mod that also has shadow casting for everything. Um, but yeah, it calls them really close to the camera. Um, but you're getting shadowing on even the buildings now. And it's pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, you'll see the shadowing here. It's so cool. It's so sick. Like, we're getting new dynamic shadows. It's, it's crazy to say that the, the PC version now has a visual feature that the PS4, PS5 version, really PS4 version, uh, does not have. That's weird to say. That's just weird to say. It's something that the PS4 version, well, I would say cannot do, but I don't know that. Technically, if you enabled it and then, like, you know, FTP transferred it back over to your PS4, because obviously you can install mods on a jailbroken PS4. I would be curious if the shadow casting would, like, break things. <laughs> I guess we would see. Yeah, so here's a good example. So when we're back here, the shadow on this little street lamp, watch as I walk towards it. It's a very subtle, like, fading effect. Then it does a low-resolution one. Then as I get closer, yeah, you can see it swaps to a higher one. Uh, in the G params that control the uh, shadows, the shadow resolution is already set at 2K resolution, which is pretty good. Uh, I will be testing going up to 4K resolution on the shadow map just for, just for kicks to see what happens. But yeah, look at this foliage uh, shadows, the fence shadows. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy that we're at this moment. This doesn't work, right? Yeah, not in this save. Okay. Um, but also for stability, uh, the fact that I've been able to play the game and have no crashes. Now, I did delete the enemies, so, like, fair play. But still, to be able to render Bloodborne like this on PC at a pretty competent 30 FPS. Also, I should, know, I should say I have upscaled textures for everything in Central Yarnum. I am running those. I'm running it at 1080p. Because 1440p seems to have definitely more issues at the moment. This build had a little bit of a reversion uh, there. But it's still pretty crazy. Like, come on. This is the dream. I've been living for this moment. Because I literally, when this new build came out, I started to work on the Dynamic Shadows mod. And I was done within, like, 15 minutes. It's something I've... My prior experience, my over one year 
one year plus of modding uh, from software games has led to that moment because I locked the fuck in. And it wasn't really that hard, to be honest, but it's also like the experience of knowing what to add shadow casting to and what not to and what can cause issues and don't do it to the sky. Don't do it to the sky box. Don't do it to a big dome that's above it. Don't do it to the LOD model. So there's a lot of knowledge that kind of went into that. Um, so I was able to quickly... Uh-oh, we're getting rainbow artifacts. Uh, also, I accidentally deleted the lantern. Don't judge me, but I deleted the lantern. Um, oh, I think I forgot to say, we're, we also have motion blur working. This is actually the native motion blur in Bloodborne. And it's really good motion blur. Uh, pretty excellent. I think we're getting the per object as well. So just absolutely... I don't think the anti-aliasing is... Well, it might be working, because honestly, the game was pretty shimmery as is. So maybe we are getting the FXAA. Um, now, you can destroy objects. Yeah, so that's nice. Yoink, yoink. Uh, people are going to ask in the comments uh, what my specs are. I'm running a 5700X, 8-core, uh, 16-thread AMD Ryzen processor. I have an RTX 2060 12 gigabytes. Uh, which was the special version they put out for like less than a year, I want to say. And then I just now upgraded the 32 gigabytes of RAM, uh, thanks to your guys' support and the money I've been able to make from YouTube and Patreon and uh, Coffee, Ko-Fi. Uh, it's been insane, um, and it's super helpful. So yeah, if you want to support the mod development and anything that I work on, that is the way to do it. And... Yeah, 32 gigabytes definitely helps with the emulator, although most of the time I ran with 16, so like, it's not to say you can't run with uh, 16 gigabytes. Yeah, here's some more shadows. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. It's beautiful. You know I'm the biggest hoe for dynamic shadows. Always have been, always will be. Like, even this little wall, like, lamp, come on. We now get a dynamic shadow. It calls it very close. Yeah, you can see here's the cascade that gets rid of a lot of the shadowing, but it keeps some of it. Yeah, so I gotta work on that. Uh, the shadow cascades are in the G-Param as well. I was playing around with it and nothing changed. So yeah, I gotta look at that. There's like three different files, four different files that, why some of them apply the changes and some don't. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, but as you know, with everything I've worked on, I will eventually figure it out, and I will push out the shadow rendering distance and the shadow fade. So it, yeah, you can see it kind of happens here on this object, on these papers. Yeah, interesting. Uh, over here, I specifically, now you'll see it also is not handling the transparencies of the base of the tree very well. Uh, they're still working on that. Um, there's going to be a material update. Um, yeah, normal maps are getting a little wonky. It's, it's funny, the farther we go, the more kind of wonkiness that starts uh, cropping up. But still, like, look, other than those rainbow artifacts, um, it's shocking how fast this has been. Oh, yeah, look at these foliage shadows. These are brand new. Oh, my God. It's crazy. Unbelievable. Yeah, oh man, look how close that coals. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I gotta push it out. I don't need to push it out like a ton, but I do need to push out the distance for uh, these dynamic shadows. Which I understand why they had it this way. Because in their setup, they never had dynamic shadows on fucking everything. So there was no reason for them to have the shadow cascades set up uh, in a smarter way. But I actually like how they fade. The fading is actually pretty effective. Now, I believe it's the actual cascades, because those are two different things. The shadow fade, that's it's fading like that. And then there's separate settings for the cascades for the distance uh, at which it will render in. And these are all standard rendering techniques. So I've had some comments on Twitter that were like, oh my god, why does From Software never enable dynamic shadowing? It's like, no, well, that, that's, that's inaccurate. They have dynamic shadowing for the things that, that need dynamic shadowing. And they use baked shadows for the things that don't need it. And that's common practice in game development. Like, 
up till 2024. Like, that's just standard. You should, it's wasteful. And, you know, but I'm doing it because it enables, like, it's a, it's a hack that I can use to get to more accurate shadows quicker and without having to, like, figure out rebaking all the lighting to add in, like, more shadows for things. This is just a way that, boom, done. Uh, and if I can do it and still get 30 FPS, uh, and obviously with people with more powerful GPUs can get higher frame rates. I can get higher, but at the moment with the emulator, they haven't really been, you know, done their optimization passes yet. So we're still early on when it gets to that. Also, I think I may have hit a memory leak, but like, look at these dynamic shadows. I'm sorry. I like, I'm just gonna, I'm, I, I'm in love. It's so beautiful. And they actually have a really good appearance that they're not overly sharp. And I know some people might be like, yeah, but isn't that just because they're low resolution? It's like, yes, but from what, you know, if, you're, if you've been following ray tracing and like path tracing, so a lot of the times when you get the ray tracing shadow, uh, you know, setting, yeah, I think I'm getting a memory leak. I think it's about to bomb. Um, those shadows, when you compare them to like high resolution rasterization shadows, they're less, uh, they appear less uh, accurate uh, or less sharp. And for the longest time, we've been, we've been, you know, ever since like stencil shadows and whatnot, we've been chasing uh, highly, like high resolution shadows. But the thing is, having it seem sort of less sharp and, and sometimes out of focus is actually more accurate in most of the cases. So the way that the shadowing is working in Bloodborne right now, like these shadows actually look really good. Now, they're not doing what ray tracing would do where the shadow is sharper at the source of the shadow and then it gets, uh, you know, as you go farther on, it obviously becomes less clear. Uh, also, it's early in the morning and I'm still drinking my coffee, so I'm not going to be good at saying any of these things. Also, I am absolutely getting a memory leak at the moment. Performance is tanking. Oh, no, it just went back up. Wow, okay. Uh, let's go inside here. Let's go inside here. The interior's got a big update as well. Um, oh, you know what I should do? All right, let's... Hold on. We're going to do something real cool because uh, I love you guys and you're really cool and I've said that already but you're double cool uh, I'm going to put back the special effect files uh, I also did put out a mod uh, I did release the dynamic shadows thing as a mod uh, I enabled it for the entire game did I not say that? well there you go now I've said that um, I also put out a mod that alters the SFX file to only remove the player light. I was hoping it was going to function like Dark Souls 3 and Elden Ring where it uses the number 300 as the specific SFX file that does the point light that is on the player. In Bloodborne it turns out it's 210. That was just trial and error. I find out I found out it was 210. So I removed that one and then it doesn't render. Um, but if we put it back, uh, I think you're going to find this pretty funny. Um, so let's copy all of that back into the game, and uh, we're going to see what happens. I still have disabled the point lights that they used just for, like, fill lights. I still have those disabled, so don't worry about that. Those are kind of working, but look a little funky. So special effects are like a fire effect, or a little, like a torch has something. Um, so right now, it's mostly just illumination coming off of them, but it's still a huge improvement. So let's see how it looks. It might be... They're too bright at the moment, by the way. Let's see if it loads. Hey! Yeah, so the player light is working, but it's way too bright at the moment. So that's the only problem. And performance is not great with it. So they, they have some optimization to be doing on that. But yeah, now you'll see the lamps up here actually have their little light, which is cool. Now some of these uh, SFX thingies actually have their point lights baked into them as, as, as their own or on their own, so they don't need a separate point light placed on the map, but that's all inside baseball bullshit, so uh, don't worry about it. 
Um, I guess there's none this way. Yeah, the, the player light, you can see why I disabled it. It's not great. Also, that lamp had some light. Um, so the fact that we're getting, you know, this sort of illumination is massive. It's so cool. Oh, actually, let me pull out. Do I have a... Oh, I do have a torch. you love to see it. It's very bright. Okay, sorry. Sorry about the flashbang. <laughs> um, yeah, but now our homie has his little lamp on, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, so here's the cool thing. So let's exit out. And to help performance here, let's... I guess I was going to make this its own video, but it probably doesn't deserve its own video. We'll just, we'll just, uh, so here's my little modified SFX file, which is for the common effects. So let's copy that over and launch this bad boy. I don't know why I said bad boy, but it's early in the morning for me in the Midwest, in the central time zone, where I was going to say where we don't play no games, but I hear that's the Rio Grande Valley is where they play no games. Apparently we play games in the Midwest. I think that's true. It's also very flat. Yeah, you can see how performance is a lot better because we got rid of that player light, but we still have the other lights. You'll love to see it. So let's go this way. So the item drops uh, now have illumination on it, but they're not really displaying the particle effect uh, itself. Even the messengers now have their own little particle effect on it. Um, it's not entirely accurate, obviously, at the moment, but it's still like a big advancement. Like, so this lamp uh, bakes in a point light because you can see it actually having. Uh, but the illuminations, it's, you know, that's huge. And then all these have lamps or little point lights on them. Like, so, like, I'm not even making sense anymore because I'm just so happy. And like, this, this is the dream. Like, I'm living the dream. Which, of course, does play into Bloodborne a little bit with dreams and nightmares. But this is, we're in the good timeline. Uh, also, if you want to notice the uh, uh, SSAO working, you can, if we pan the camera kind of quickly, you can see that there's a little bit of a uh, outline on the character because it's applying SSAO. It's pretty quick, though. Uh, but this was, yeah, this is when they, I think it was Dark Souls 2, technically, that had screen space ambient occlusion. Um, like a good screen space one. I think Dark Souls 1, the Prepare to Die edition, may have had some sort of AO, but I don't remember. I know Remastered obviously had SSAO. Um, oh yeah, let's go down in the sewers. We're in overtime now, but look at the interiors. They're so much better looking. We're so close to accurate rendering. And they just have to fix some of like the material rainbow effects, like that stuff, you know, like that'll get fixed. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah, there's also kind of a weird thing with like the fading. So it like gets darker as that might be the shadow casting because I turned on shadow casting for everything. And so it, I think it will darken certain things just because it's, it's a shadow that it, the way they're handled is different from uh, how the light map does it. But so you'll notice this lamp does not have a point light baked into it, but it just has the particle effect. Interesting. But yeah, the water now is so much better. Uh, they do not have planar reflections working, um, but that'll come. That's what they use to do the reflections. Uh, technically, Bloodborne does support uh, screen space reflections, SSR. Uh, and weirdly, they have it like enabled by default, but like I've never seen any sort of... I think Lance McDonald actually made a video on it. Oh, also, so here's an interesting case. You'll notice my character is actually, you'll see my the cast shadow on my character, but why is it casting a shadow when there's a giant wall here? Ah, so I believe, I'm gonna go toy around with this. So I believe that is gonna be a classic case of like with the other FromSoft games. Uh, you need to, well actually, Dark Souls 3 didn't really have that issue, but uh, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, so it's back face rendering. So what's probably happening here is that this big mesh we have, is probably not rendering the back faces, which makes sense with baked lighting. You don't need to worry about that uh, because obviously it's more performant not to render the back faces because the player can't see the back faces. 
So essentially, if you were to go to the other side of this mesh, it would have its ass hanging out. But that's fine because, well, no one's going to see it. And I think that's what's happening here. The dynamic shadows, they're casting shadows down here that normally wouldn't have been visible, but now they are. But like the water is massively improved. Well, actually the water is, the water is rendering something. I wonder, I'd have to check these objects to see if all of them are in the reflect camera. Cause it looks like some of them are. There are reflections happening. I just don't think it's everything. So that might be another thing. Uh, well, I know that's another thing I'll be adding, uh, which is adding as many things to the reflect camera as I can. Uh, so the reflections uh, become more accurate. And, uh, you know, yeah, you can see here, I think it's reflecting the sky where it should be reflecting this. So that is due to likely a reflect cam issue. It might not have that toggled on. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. I need to drink more coffee. I have not finished my first cup. I wanted to make this video as fast as possible because I've been enjoying this so much and that's why I've been making daily videos. Also the reaction to these videos has been fucking bananas. Uh, so shout out to the emulator devs. They're the true heroes. They're the ones emulating or they're the ones activating all these features and getting all this to work. I'm just doing the bullshit on my side with, that I'm good at, which is adding dynamic shadows or changing what things are reflected and then looking at the G params. Like I can, I'm good on the, the FromSoft side of the files, but when it comes to the actual difficult job of programming this emulator, like that's not me. So I don't want any credit for that because I get none of it um, other than just testing it. But like, no, this is all the emulator devs. They're fucking wizards. I'm playing, I literally, for the last however long I, I've been recording this, I've been just playing Bloodborne at 30 FPS at a decent level of accuracy. And in some cases, a level to which Bloodborne has not been able to do on PC before. Um, so like, it's, it's crazy. It's like, it's been a fever dream of, of just, this is possible. This is happening. We are going to have a stable version of Bloodborne. Not as long as I think people thought it would take. Oh my god, I forgot the ball still rolls even with no people here. Don't worry about it. Um, oh, also we got like distant fog effects working. That's why the visuals look a lot better and like these objects aren't super clear even though they're like way in the distance. Anyway, my voice is hurting. I need to drink water. Um, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, well, I don't even really need to tell you. Y'all have been going crazy on that. So thank you very much. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Ew. We did it. We did it. All right.